at the right front side of the bus that look exactly alike. These are the three orbiter processing facilities. Number two, which is the one that's closest to us, that's where Endeavour is right now. Endeavour will be going to the Space and Science Institute in Los Angeles, California. The second one over from the road is OPF number one. That's where Atlantis is. Atlantis is staying here at the Kennedy Space Center. We'll have it back at the visitor complex to be viewed sometime during the summer of 2013 is the goal. And then Discovery is right in the northwest bay of the VAB, right across from us. Discovery will be leaving us here in about two, two and a half weeks, heading toward the Smithsonian Institute in Washington, D.C. We will place it on the top of a 747 and fly it to Dulles International Airport. And we hate to see any of them going, but at least we get to have Atlantis here at Kennedy Space Center. Now, off to the right, this big track vehicle sitting over here is what we call the crawler transporter. We have two of these. And this is what NASA would use to take a mobile launch platform shuttle stack or Saturn V rocket from the vehicle assembly building out to the launch pad. And we'll talk about the crawler just a little bit later. Although I do want to mention these crawlers were made by a company in Marion, Ohio, up in the Midwest, 47 years ago. And they have serviced the Space Center very well. Now, here in, in, in uh, at the right front side of our bus here. This is a mobile launch platform that was used for the shuttle program. And what would happen, the crawler would come over here and pick up this platform, take it into the east side of the vehicle assembly building. The first thing they would do is stack two 130-foot solid rocket boosters. Then they would bring the big red external tank. And the final piece of the shuttle stack would be the orbiter coming from the processing facility. Now here in front of us, this is a brand new mobile launcher that was built for the Ares Constellation program. This program was canceled by our current administration a little over two years ago. And, uh, but NASA is planning to modify that and use that as we are working on now a heavy lift vehicle program. Now as we come around to the east side of the VAB, you have two bays on this side here. And these two bays are, this is where all 135 shuttles were stacked in one of these two bays right here. The west side was only used for storage during the shuttle program. Now, all building connected to the VAB is what we call LCC, or Launch Control Center. The Launch Control Center would control the launch up to seven seconds. At seven seconds, it was handed to Mission Control at Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. Now, you can see the, the uh, gravel road here to our right. That's called the crawler way. From the vehicle assembly building to the pads, you were looking at a three and a half to four mile trip three and a half miles to pad A, four miles to pad B. And it would take the crawler between six and eight hours to make that three and a half to four mile trip. Now going across the crawler way, which is made up of two 40 foot gravel lanes and a 50 foot grass median. And you can get a good look at it here as we go across. Folks, that is, uh, I, do, I don't want anybody to get excited. That's not a real orbiter sitting over there, okay? That is a uh, replica of the orbiter. And uh, this was at our visitor complex. This is Explorer. Explorer was at the, uh, the visitor complex for nearly 18 years. And since we have Atlantis staying here at the Space Center, we're sending this replica out to Houston uh, by barge sometime here in the next few weeks. Houston won't know whether they have a real orbiter or not, so it'll be okay. <laughs> Just teasing. 
Now, getting back to the crawler way, the crawler is wide enough it would straddle the grass. And when the crawler is carrying a mobile launch platform, it is the width of an eight-lane highway. And the crawler carries 5,000 <laughs> gallons of diesel fuel, and it does get a whopping 35 feet per gallon. So hang on to your trucks, okay? 35 feet per gallon. Now, when the crawler is carrying a mobile launch platform and shuttle stack, you're looking at 18 million pounds going down the crawler way. And the crawler way itself was built by the Army Corps of Engineers. It is eight solid feet of crushed limestone rock fill, select fill, liquid asphalt, and it is topped with 10 inches of river rock from the Alabama River. Now they chose that particular river rock simply because it will not spark. In that shuttle stack you have two 130 foot solid rocket boosters loaded with solid rocket fuel. You do not want anything that will spark. And they did have to change the river rock out on the crawler way every four to five years during the shuttle program. So that is the crawler way. Now coming into view up here ahead of us at the left front side of the bus, that is launch pad 39A. 39A has been our only active shuttle launch pad for nearly five years. Launch pad 39B is off of the distance to the left. 39B is being renovated, was being renovated, for the Ares Constellation program, which would take us back to a clean pad formation, just like we had with the Saturn V rockets. So that's where NASA is headed right now. We are going back to rockets and capsules. Now, off to the right, across this body of water over here, you're looking at into Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, you can see these launch pads that are all up and down the Space Coast there. All of those launch pads you see are active launch pads for unmanned rockets here at uh, Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. Now, at the gantry, you do have access to an elevator if you happen to need that. And you can spend whatever time you would like to here when you get ready to go. Just come on back out. We have buses that come through every 12 to 15 minutes. Any of those buses will take you on to the next stop. Folks, have a great time while you're here. Please make sure you have. Please make sure you have all of your. Uh,